Have you ever wanted to play a single-player game and make it into a co-op experience? What about that friend you used to play couch co-op games together but has moved out of state or country? What if I told you that it was possible to play couch co-op games and single-player games remotely from anywhere in the world? Keep watching and I'll teach you how to do it. Hello everyone and welcome to my Parsec tutorial. Fun fact, did you guys know that in some countries certain video games are banned? Thailand banned the Grand Theft Auto series, Australia banned The Witcher 2, and Mortal Kombat 11 is banned in Japan. There are many more banned games which is one of the reasons why a tool like Parsec is so powerful for bypassing these restrictions. Anyways today I will show you how to configure Parsec so that you can make any game, including single player games, into a co-op experience with anyone around the world. First let's download and install Parsec. If you want to remote into your own PC and vice versa, then install it on that PC as well. Make sure virtual display driver is checked. This is required for hosting games. Make sure you register two accounts if you want to remote into yourself. Once you're registered and signed in, we will then configure our host settings. Click on settings on the left side, then click on host. Make sure hosting is enabled. I would leave resolution to use client resolution. Bandwidth limit will all come down to your connection. I set mine to 10 megabits per second because that's all the upload speed I have. To have decent quality for your clients I would recommend 10 megabits per second per user connected to the host PC. I left my FPS at 60 since it can cause instability if you go past that. For echo cancelling make sure you set it to new. For echo selection set it to discord if you're using discord otherwise you will echo. That should be it for the settings, make sure you restart Parsec so that these settings apply. Now let's add a friend. On the left side, click on the friends icon, then click add friend. Search for your friend and click on the friend icon to the right to add. Once your invitation has been accepted, you should now be able to connect to each other. To accept a friend request, select on the friend icon on the left side. Once accepted, you should now be able to see your new friend after reloading the computer's screen. Hit connect to connect to the host and wait for your permission to be granted. After hitting connect from the client side and accepting from the host side, we can determine as the host what access we want to grant. By default gamepad is enabled, but keyboard and mouse is disabled. I will grant access to the mouse and keyboard so that the client PC can control the host PC using the touchscreen and virtual keyboard. I wasn't able to capture myself touching the ROG ally, but you can see that I clicked on the search bar and typed something. I didn't mention this earlier, but I recommend granting full access through your buddy list on your ROG ally so you can bypass the approval and control it unattended. Make sure you do this both on your ROG ally and your host PC. I'm now going to show you that we can now connect to each other unattended. As you can see I was able to connect without having to be approved. To disconnect, I double tap on the red parsec icon at the top left of the screen. This icon can be hidden as well if it bothers you. As you can also see, I was able to connect to the ROG ally unattended as well. While I'm connected, I'm going to show you how much more efficient I can configure my armory crate keys compared to touching them on screen. Sometimes I might fat finger the wrong key, but with a mouse, I am able to select the keys with precision. It might not seem like a big deal for just one game, but once you start configuring multiple games, you'll appreciate the ability to configure them remotely. I might as well configure some of my hotkeys in Final Fantasy XIV. As you can see it is so much faster dragging and dropping my skills compared to using the touchscreen and gamepad. I wanted to mention one more thing before I demo the games. By default, Parsec shares your entire screen which could lead to some privacy issues. To avoid this problem first go to Parsec. Click on settings. Then click on approved apps. 
As you can see, the moment I enable approved apps, the client cannot see the game when the host is tabbed out. Make sure to enable it and select the approved app you want to share. As you can see when I leave the screen the client can't see the game, and when I come back they can see it again. There's actually one more thing I forgot to mention and I'm starting to think I might have Alzheimer's. Anyways, I just wanted to let you guys know that I have been running in silent mode the whole time. This is one of the great benefits of having a host do all the heavy lifting so that you can save battery life and play games that you can't play or play at a higher setting. Let's connect to my desktop to test out Resident Evil. If you try moving, it won't work unless you press A to connect. You should hear a ding if you're connected. As you can see, I'm now able to move after I pressed a button and heard the notification. If you double tap the parsec icon at the top left, you can see the statistics. My bitrate here sits at around 10 megabits per second because that's what I capped it at. If there were another user connected to my desktop, then the bitrate would split in half, assigning both users 5 megabits per second. As you can see here I can easily swap between the host and client making this a single player co-op experience. Let's take a look at Enter the Gungeon. This game isn't very demanding and uses only about 2 megabits per second and produces very high quality from the client side. If the parsec icon is bothering you, you can hide it. As you can see, the icon is now gone, creating a more natural experience. To bring it back up press Ctrl, Shift, and M. I'm now going to show you how to switch controllers. As you can see, I lost my controls and had to re-add it as player 2 from the host side. I'm trying my best here to play both controls to show you what it would look like if you were playing with a friend, but it was hard as hell. Now, for our last game demo of the day. Donkey Kong Country 2, my all-time favorite Super Nintendo game. Enjoy! If you found this video useful, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. Not only did this video take me a long time to create, but this really helps the YouTube algorithm promote my videos and gives me the motivation to keep on creating content for viewers like you. Thank you.